If we could color each of the five beads of this necklace with one of two colors, say blue and pink, how many different necklaces do you think we can make? Well, we have two choices of colors for each of the five beads, and so there are 32 different ways to color. However, if we think about it, we should really consider these two colorings to be the same, as we could rotate the necklace to obtain one from the other. On the other hand, these two necklaces are fundamentally different. How many essentially different necklaces do we have then? With only 5 beads and 2 colors, it's not difficult to list all the different necklaces manually and count them. But our wish is to count using a strategy which we can hope to generalize to count necklaces with more colors and beads. We notice that each coloring can be rotated 5 steps till we get a full turn. These 5 necklaces here are equivalent and we say they are in the same group. Thus, counting different necklaces is in a sense counting how many such groups we have. The set of 32 necklaces must split up into groups of 5, where any two necklaces in the same group are just rotations of one another. But 5 doesn't divide 32, so we must have made a mistake. Oh yes, of course, the necklaces with all beads of the same color are in their own group altogether. We call such necklaces monochromatic, and there are two of these. The remaining 30 necklaces split into 6 groups of 5 equivalent necklaces. Here are those six groups. Thus, all in all, we find there are eight different necklaces composed of five beads of two available colors. Let us now suppose we have some k number of colors to color our five beaded necklace. By the same logic as before, we have k to the power of 5 colorings in total, as there are k choices for each beat. Among these, the k to the power of 5 minus k non-monochromatic necklaces must come in groups of 5 rotations. So we have k to the power of 5 minus k over 5 essentially different non-monochromatic necklaces and k monochromatic ones. At first glance, it isn't even clear that this expression must be an integer. We shall return to this point shortly, but for now, let's consider what happens when we have a different number of beads. Let's try small numbers first. Say we have 4 beads and 2 colors. Well, similar logic as before should carry over, and so we must have these many necklaces, shouldn't we? But wait a minute, that's not a whole number. To understand what we did wrong, we must rethink why we are dividing by 4. Earlier, with 5 beads, we had seen that either a necklace is monochromatic or each of the 5 rotations lead to apparently different colorings. And so, we divided by 5 to obtain the true number. However, this isn't the case with 4 beads. If we turn this necklace 2 turns, we get the same thing again. And so there are only 2 necklaces in the group for this necklace. So these colorings, where some smaller parts repeat to create the whole necklace, introduces problems. Well, now that we understand why we got a wrong answer for 4, why can't we have a similar scenario with 5 beats? The key point here is that 5 is a prime number. If any smaller part of a necklace repeats, then the number of beads in it must have to divide the total number of beads. If the total number is a prime, its only proper divisor is 1. 
and so the smaller part must be just a single bead which if it repeats our necklace is monochromatic. Our count of necklaces is thus correct for 5 beads and indeed for any prime number P of beads. With P beads and K available colors, the only repeating necklaces are monochromatic, K in number and the non-repeating necklaces come in groups of size P and so there are K to the power of P minus K over P of such groups. One of the corollaries of the fact that this expression counts the number of necklaces is that it must be a whole number. That is, P must always divide K to the power of P minus K. It isn't obvious at all why this must be the case. And in fact, it is a remarkable result known as Fermat's Little Theorem. We have here found what is known as a combinatorial proof of the result, where we show that a given expression counts the number of a certain kind of things, and thus must be a whole number. The proof is so elegant, it might feel like cheating. I assure you, it is not. Though perhaps, the number theoretic proofs of the theorem provide deeper understanding. So do check those out. Now that we have the answer for a prime number of beads, it is natural to seek the answer of the question in full generality. You can try to generalize the strategy we used here. In this case, you should get a recurrence relation in the form of a Dirichlet convolution. At some point in the future, I might make videos to develop the theory of Dirichlet series, as it arises naturally in many problems in number theory, and as in the case of this problem, in combinatorics too. Another approach to the problem comes from group theory, which is the study of symmetries. The orbit counting formula, popularly known as Burnside's lemma, gives a general approach to count objects up to symmetry. When I make a video on these topics, I may or may not return to this problem. In any case, it is always more rewarding to discover on your own the motivations behind seemingly abstract pieces of mathematics. So I highly encourage you to get your notebook dirty and see where you go with this problem. Thanks a lot for watching. If you enjoy exploring mathematics, do not forget to subscribe. See you soon.